I would like to call Dr. Emil Shah, Dr. Jahar Mazumdar, Dr. Vivek Mangla, and Dr. Anandur Ram Murthy to please join us as chairpersons for the session. two minutes to go for the session. Uh, other two speakers are on the way. So we'll start with Dr. Manas Ranjan Shahu, who is a professor and head of uh, surgery at uh, Ames Bonesher. He'll speak on lab D2 total gastrectomy. A very good morning and thank you, Professor Sa, uh, for those kind words. Uh, at the outset, I must thank the organizing committee of IASG for the, giving me the honor of this podium. Uh, actually, Professor Rawat, uh, Rawat was to start with uh, D2 subtotal gastrectomy and it would have been uh, maybe, uh, it would have been much better after that. But does not matter, let me start with uh, performing a laparoscopic D2 total gastrectomy. Could you play the video? Could you come out of the presentation and go to the folder? So let me start it off. Give the control to me or you manage. Okay, fine. Just a minute. Let I just want to start it from the beginning. So here is a 77-year-old female with a BMI of 26.9, mucinous gastric adenocarcinoma, preoperative chemotherapy given. This is the trocar placement. I just want to highlight here that when you go for the trocar placement, whether it is a total gastrectomy or subtotal gastrectomy, maybe, let me just go on to that trocar. So beyond most of the time, uh, there will be almost little difference on placing the trocar. The uh, surgeon stands between the legs in the French position and the first step of the procedure is going for the omentectomy. Uh, that's uh, the colon and uh, with my left and right hand, you just uh, go on doing the omentectomy and that continues. That's on the left side. The left gastroepiploic vessels when they are exposed, stay till there, then come back again. So essentially, uh, both the procedures uh, beyond little bit of change of the trucker position, they remain almost uh, uh, same, whether you are planning a subtotal or a total gastrectomy. So the right gastroepiploic vessel is in view now and it's clipped. So the omentectomy is 
almost coming to the end. Then we focus on the hiatus, dissecting the gastric cardia, that's the pleuroperitoneal membrane, and exposing the, both the crury and the esophagus, that's the right crust, the hiatus, So that, that right gastric vessels. In fact, uh, this, I will recommend surgeons who are starting off their career there when they are upgrading and upscaling themselves uh, to a malignant uh, esophageal or gastric surgery probably the first thing that they, they should be doing all the hiatal surgeries first and uh, once they get uh, acquainted with the anatomy and the technicalities there then things become much easier. So duodenum is dissected. Now the next thing is to transect the duodenum. Then starts the D2 lymphadenectomy. That remains the same whether you are planning a subtotal or a total gastrectomy. And believe me, lymphadenectomy in laparoscopy and more so with a 3D becomes much easier, much more comfortable than what we do in open. So the lymphadenectomy continues. So almost uh, the celiac axis and the trifocus are getting skeletonized. Then the left gastric vessels are getting exposed. They need to be tackled. So if we go for the literature, in fact, uh, till now, till that, uh, laparoscopic total gastrectomy, even though not the recommended procedure in le literature, which is a subtotal gastrectomy is quite recommended, but still I think it will be not too far, then it will be coming up as a recommendation as well, because more or less you are doing the same thing. So once the left gastric, they are all dealt. Then the splenic vessels, the lymphadenectomy on that side. So once it is done, then we go for the gastrosplenic ligament and taking care of the short gastrics as well. Left gastroepiploic is divided. Then the short gastrics.
So lymphadenectomy around the cardia is almost going to be complete. Then the esophagus is thoroughly mobilized, get lengthened. The vagus need to be divided. Now is the time that we can transect the esophagus. Maybe before doing this, you can take two stray switches on both the sides and keep lung thread so that uh, you do not lose the stem. But uh, that you have mobilized well, then it does not retreat and retract. So, that is after uh, the resection. Just making bit of space for the anastomosis. making space for a side to side esophagogesinostomy. The rule limb goes through the mesentery. So, it makes a side to side esophagogesinostomy and the stoma need to be closed. I am using a VLAC here, but uh, you can use a PDS as well. last part of the procedure jejunogesinostomy closing the stoma there That is it. Thank you. Uh, do you add a fitting jejunostomy also? No. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, any comments and questions from the floor? Thank you for this wonderful video. Um, do you always prefer the linear anastomosis in the esophagus or do you sometimes uh, do a circular anastomosis? Yeah, uh, there are people who regularly use circular, but I am a big fan of a linear anastomosis. I am very comfortable with that. Do you need some more mobilization of the esophagus so that the anastomosis remain more towards the abdomen? Pardon? More, more mobilization of the esophagus. Esophagus is need to be mobilized, but not more, but it need to be comfortably mobilized so that you have a good anastomosis and you have good space to uh, do the anastomosis as well. Whether these patients get a post-op adjuvant uh, plot? Absolutely. Four seconds. Absolutely. Uh, 
nice video, uh, Manish. Thank you. Uh, about the circular anastomosis, you think that if it's a Seward's type 2 or 1, yeah. ready to go a bit more higher, a circular anastomosis would be better, or oral anastomosis would be better. I, I think in that situation it becomes better. But here, I think uh, with a total gastrectomy, uh, you think linear anastomosis makes life much easier. I don't know what's your preference, but I always feel it's uh, much easier and much better in uh, doing I linear anastomosis. I always use uh, uh, orobil anastomosis. Okay. So that we can do avoid suturing orbit. that hiatus difficult anastomosis. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Manish. Thank you. Thank you.